I have a secret to share with you all. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my tried and true eight step process for treating and preventing fleas and ticks naturally in three dogs over, get this, four different states, all the way from upstate New York down to Texas, over to California, and now in Oregon. So let's just jump into this video, right? Meow. By now, I'm sure you have seen the hundreds, if not thousands of cases of dogs that have experienced severe skin irritations, paralysis, seizures, and even death when using those commonly used and very popular flea and tick treatment options that are pesticide and chemical based that you see at all, or not all, but many vet clinics in these big pet stores. And so I became obsessed years ago with finding an alternative option that did not include putting orally or on the skin of my dogs a pesticide. You see this commonly known all around the media and research that you may be giving your dog pesticides every single month to keep and repel these fleas and ticks away, but ticks are becoming resistant to them. But I know what you're thinking, which is Rachel, my vet said if my dog is bitten by a disease-born tick, my dog could get one of the numerous diseases like Lyme disease, for example, and I don't want that either. I'm right there with you. So what I decided to do was to weigh my risks. Now, I do want to caveat everything. Every video I have, it's on every disclaimer, is that I'm not your dog's vet. I'm not your dog's nutritionist. Uh, so you work with your vet, but I am going to share you what has worked for us. And you can take that information learn more, ask more questions, and just do the best you can for your dog. You are your dog's best advocate. Now I'm gonna share the eight steps that I follow and the products that I use, which will be all linked below in my shop page. So don't worry about taking notes. You can check all of that out after this. And then after I share all those steps, I'll talk about what I would do if I was in a position where I didn't have access to these natural products or I tried all of them and they truly and genuinely did not work and I had to, for whatever reason, use some of the more uh, common traditional vet prescribed flea and tick medicines and how I would use those in the safest way possible. So the first thing I do is I love to treat our yard and even our home with human grade, food grade, dimitaceous earth, which is made up of tiny fossilized plankton that is naturally occurring, which you can get at your local pet store or farming store. And I just put a light dusting inside my home on soft surfaces, like behind the couch where bugs might like to hide, uh, carpet, a little bit on dog beds, and yes, it is pet safe. I just use a little bit, again, human grade, food grade. And I also put some outside of my home in the grass and around the entryways of my house. This is a natural repellent for little bugs and little tiny creepy crawlers. I also vacuum regularly. As you guys know, I'm a big advocate of the iRobot vacuum because it's keeping the crumbs and the dirt and the grime up off of the floors frequently. And after each vacuum, I'll usually spray just a tiny bit more of that dimitaceous earth. Wash their dog bedding at least twice a month, if not more frequently, depending on how bad fleas and ticks are in your area. And I do spread a little bit of that dimitaceous earth on the edges of their dog bed and under it. Not, I don't cake it on there, but just a little bit. It helps repel anything that might try to live on there. Then in the same thought of keeping my home inside and outside unattractive to creepy crawlers, I also wanna keep my dogs bodies and their coats unattractive to fleas and ticks. And one way I do that is I use natural flea and tick repelling shampoos and conditioners and I bathe my dogs regularly. What I mean by regularly, every dog is different. Thank you, Wally. Um, but in the summers, my dogs may get baths twice a month when fleas and ticks are pretty bad. The shampoo and conditioners I use are completely uh, vegan, cruelty-free, non-GMO, they're organic, and they have natural essential oils in there that absolutely repel, not even just fleas and ticks, but other bugs as well, which is why I love it. Plus they smell great. 
and because it's made with natural products only, none of the other preservatives that I see in most other shampoos and conditioners out there, it doesn't dry their skin out. I hear this all the time, like I can't wash my dog because their skin gets dry and they start flaking. We had that issue with Bentley in a major way years ago until I started using, there's only two shampoos I really love. Right now, I'm using Kin and Kind. Again, this is linked in my shop page down below, so you don't have to write this down, you can go check it out. Then I also do a spot treatment. So I use this stuff. This has been a lifesaver. I highly, highly recommend it. It's a, from a very tiny company as well. It's extremely rare to find a topical flea and tick preventative product that truly and genuinely one works and is not made with toxic allergens, toxic chemicals and preservatives, which sounds so bizarre. And you would think, why would a pet company make a product that has known irritants to dogs? I don't know. I, I really don't have a good answer for you. I can't tell you how many very common topical sprays like this that claim to help against flea and ticks, and maybe they do, but I look at the ingredients and I see ingredients that are known irritants to the skin of dogs. When we go out hiking, you guys see that I hike a lot with the dogs and we go out into the wilderness. I will take this with me and I'll spray it on them before we start, once in the middle, and then a little bit at the end. And it's just a quick spritz, it's not a big deal. And I just really focus on the areas where fleas and ticks will migrate like on their neck and their hind area behind their ears, in their paws and legs. And we have not had an issue since using this and these natural repelling shampoos. Next is a product that you guys asked me about. I'll show you, Bentley's actually wearing his right now. So this is made of amber stones. It's not edible, um, contrary to Wally's belief. Uh, and these stones are actually known to repel naturally fleas and ticks. And supposedly, and I don't have any proof of this per se, but supposedly these can help with anxiety in your dog. So this is something that, especially if we're gonna go out on hikes in the wilderness or in the backyard, uh, where there's a lot of grass and trees, potentially fleas and ticks. I like them to wear this collar as well, and they can last a really long time. Now, before I talk about what I would do if I had to use one of those more traditional flea and tick products that my vet recommended and I just had no choice and how I would handle it safely, uh, I want to share one more thing that, or actually two more things, this first one being probably one of the most important tools in preventing and treating fleas and ticks, and that is regular body inspections. Uh, I recommend doing this with your dog weekly anyways to see if they have, if their nails are too long, if they have any sores or, or cuts on them that maybe you don't notice under their fur. Uh, if you have a doodle, like we have two in our family, making sure they don't have any mats that you're missing, and just to check like their ears, their teeth, their gums, their eyes, and check between their toes because these are common places where things like foxtails can get cut or get caught um, and of course fleas and ticks can be and this is important because if you find one or two then you know that there's more nearby so you know it may be time to give them a bath with a natural flea repellent shampoo spray a little bit of this on go vacuum and really get aggressive with how you are preventing and treating fleas and ticks in your home. I also love the idea of using a flea comb once a week. And you don't necessarily have to do the whole body, but doing the back of their neck where fleas like to hide in the back hind area. Um, I've actually had an issue with Finn that he is very allergic to fleas. So we had an issue in Austin because funny, not even funny story, a knowing story really, is we had a lot of feral cats and these feral cats obviously were covered in fleas and ticks and they loved coming to our yard. We also had a lot of trees and bushes and so we had squirrels and possums and raccoons and they carried fleas and ticks. And so we constantly were battling putting out dimetaceous earth and using essential oils to deter fleas and ticks and Finn would get really bad ear infection anytime he got bit by a flea. So anytime I started seeing his ear getting a little goopy, I knew it was time to be more aggressive with my treatments that we've been talking about. And then this is actually probably the first most important, they're all very important in my opinion, 
um, tactic of what we do to help with fleas and ticks, and that is working with a holistic and or integrative vet. Because again, guys, I'm not your vet. So again, these are just what work for my dogs and, and, and my family. But when you work with an integrative vet, you're likely going to have less pressure to use these chemical and pesticide-based products. And one thing that I don't think I've seen anybody else here talk about when it comes to flea and tick treatment is what is the, we ask, well, I'll ask you, what is the reason that you want to prevent your dog from getting fleas or ticks? It's because you don't want your dog to get ill from any potential diseases they carry for the most part, right? Other than the fact that they're annoying and gross. And so what I have as part of my protocol, if you will, in, in helping my dogs is feeding them, hi Finnegan, my baby, feeding them a raw fresh food diet. I'll talk at the end of this video what that means and what I feed my dogs, but why this is important is because the diet I feed them is very low in carbohydrates. It's the most biologically and metabolically appropriate diet that they can eat. So it's going to be anti-inflammatory and keep them in the healthiest state. Because if, <laughs> hi baby, because if by chance when my dogs get bits, gets bit, bits, gets bitten by a flea or tick and there is a disease, I want my dog's immune system to be strong and healthy. And if my dogs are eating a lower carb diet, they're gonna be less tasty to fleas and ticks. Now I'm just joking. So let's talk devil's advocate. What I would do, again, I'm not saying you should do this, but work with your vet. But what I would do if I had to use one of those traditional chemical and pesticide based products that most conventional veterinarians are going to recommend for flea and tick treatment. And I'm not um, not vet shaming, right? Like we all are just on our own journey doing our own thing, but I would use it every other month. And what I mean by that is only six months of the year would I actually use that more prescribed aggressive approach. And then every month, all 12 months, I would use my eight natural steps and protocols. We're having a little bit of a wrestle match uh, that I talked about in this video. And because fleas and ticks are really dormant in really cold weather during the months of winter the three four months when it's really cold I would actually stop if it was me using the more aggressive and traditional flea and tick products and instead just continue the eight protocol steps that I've talked about in this video that are more natural and then what I'm doing in that in this scenario is I'm lessening the issue and then, and then what that's doing is just lessening that toxic load in my dog's body if I had to go that route. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about what I feed my dogs. I talked to you guys about how I feed a raw food diet. So let's jump over here, click this video right here, and we'll jump over there and talk about that together. And if you want to see more about some of my favorite products for dogs in general, click the video right here. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye.